Okay, time for a Blender tutorial here. Uh, let's go ahead and let me show you this shot. Uh, if you saw the um, shot from my uh, previous uh, video that I put out for the uh, Dr. Mad Blood 35th Anniversary Halloween Edition, you saw that I did an animation of this like Balrog type creature kind of lumbering towards the camera. So let's just take a look at that shot in Blender. All right, monster lunges and then he uh, roars or she, I should say. Now, I'm gonna show you how I did this and a uh, kind of like a shortcut I did to animate the whole thing using the um, NLA, the uh, Nonlinear Animation Mixer, down here uh, at the bottom, and uh, the Action Editor and whatnot, and it's a pretty nice little uh, tool. So, um, what I did was, I'll just zoom the camera over here, you can see what's going on. Okay, so here's my ball rock creature. Okay, and uh, I just created um, a couple of animation sequences. I created a, let's go ahead and find the walking one. Now this is my action editor here, and I'm going to, I created a walk cycle. Okay, I just animated the character walking in place. All right, and the other animation I created in the action editor, which I've shown you in the past how to use the action editor, uh, I created the roar. And what I tried to do, although I couldn't match it exactly, I tried to match the start frame of the roar action to, uh, to be as close as possible to the uh, start frame of the uh, uh, walk action. But I think actually I, I was just kind of sketching them out this time, and uh, when I started playing with this, uh, the actions actually didn't match exactly. But if you can have the start frame of one action be the exact same pose as the end frame of another action, you'll find that they will blend very seamlessly. Uh, in this case, if you if we go back and forth through the actions, you can see that they're not, well, actually, I think they are exactly pretty much the same. So again, if you can do it, great. If not, there is some blending uh, that uh, the um, uh, mixer can do for you. So I just went ahead and I created those two actions. And you'll see here, down here, I just selected my NLA editor and when you uh, start animating anything in Blender, this, and if you have the NLA window open, then you'll see this. Okay, let me expand this. I just hit shift space to expand this. Okay, you will see um, any of the actions uh, that are animated right now will show up as a track in red, and you'll start seeing these keyframes here. And uh, you'll see this little snowflake. Okay, the little snowflake means that this is a unique, uh, a unique animation. And you can see everything here that doesn't have a strip already assigned to it uh, has this little snowflake. So for example, the camera uh, has its own animation. You can see the keyframes for the camera down here. And it has the snowflake, which means that this animation is unique. It hasn't been turned into an animation clip that you can use in the mixer yet. Okay? so. Uh, the way you do that is just, um, if you want to turn this animation that you have in your scene into a clip like these down here that uh, can be um, mixed together using the mixer, you just click on that little snowflake and it becomes like a, a block, all right? So you'll see here, now we have that block, okay? And um, I can right click on this and I can move this and scale it just um, with G key to move and uh, S key to scale, so um, it's just like any other object, you can move it around. And then, um, let me expand this view again, and then if you hit the N key, we'll bring on and off the, uh, the options for that, the properties for that animation clip. Okay, and uh, the few things that you would need, you can see here the name, you can uh, give it a different name, and uh, you can give it a start and end frame, and the extrapolation, means what happens after the animation is done playing. Okay, hold forward is the default, which means that when the animation is done, when this clip is done playing, then uh, it's just going to maintain that pose until some other animation takes over, which is usually what you want. The blending mode uh, is set to replace, and uh, that seems to be the one that works for me the best. Uh, when I said to add, sometimes the, uh, I guess you would have to, if you want to set to add to have the uh, animation kind of augment the one that's in there already, um, I would suggest not 
setting any scaling keys on on these um, on your animation because then your character will start scaling and, and basically the add mode to me uh, doesn't seem to work that well. Uh, the other thing is it's set to blend in and out automatically and I found also this automatic blending to not really work that well. So I usually uncheck this by default and then I go ahead and put in my own values here for the in and out point. I'll get to, um, as you can see, the other clips here well, that one, the walk cycle doesn't have it set uh, off, but uh, um, this roar has been set. I turned off auto blend and I put in my own values for that. And I'll show you what that's all about in just a second here. Let's go back to the scene and I will uh, X, when you select something and hit X, you delete it. Okay. Okay. I have this uh, track here and um, I'm going to, for example, let's get rid of this walk. Okay, and now you can see I made an action that is simply just the character moving forward, and I call that move forward. Let's select this uh, and hit Shift A. Uh, I'm going to show you how to add a new action uh, strip. So after we've created those uh, action strips, like I showed you, after clicking on the snowflake, you create the action strip, and then it's ready to become a, something that you can mix in the mixer. Uh, now, if you want to add new action strips from ones you've already created, just select a track. You have as many tracks as you want. And uh, I just hit Shift A to bring up Add. Now, you'll see everything that has animation has its own action clip here. And so, you, for example, every cylinder that's in the scene and stuff like that that has any keyframe attached, even the uh, lamps and stuff like that, you can uh, will have these actions selectable for you. Anything that's been animated is uh, its action, its animation is available for you. So, for example, you could have two different characters with basically the same bones. You could have, for example, a ninja and a pirate, and you could take the kick action from the ninja and add it to the pirate's uh, mixer track if you wanted to. In this case, I just have uh, the walk from this guy, so I'm going to select that. Okay. I'll right click on that and move it over. Okay. And uh, I'm going to expand this. And uh, I'll just hit S to scale it out. Okay. Uh, in this case, um, I have an action that is kind of repeating here. So I want to actually we'll lift the scale back to one. Okay. All right. I want this uh, walk action to repeat twice because he's going to walk two steps. So I'll just go here under the playback settings and I'll just hit repeat. I'll just type in two. And then you can see that there's this little dash here. Let me show you if I, if I hit the repeat to three, you'll see a couple little dashes. That means you can see that the action uh, strip has been repeated uh, a couple times. We just need to repeat twice. Okay. And so now you can see that's basically what had happened. All right. It, he walks twice moving forward, and then he stops, and then he roars. Okay. And if you notice, watch the um, kind of the feet and stuff. It's not perfect. Uh, in this case, it was good enough for me to use in the, the film. And with the camera moving, moving forward, you didn't really see any kind of, you didn't really notice the foot sliding or anything. But as you can see, as I scrub through this area here, where there's a transition from the walk clip to the roar clip, you can see that there's no kind of like pop or anything like that. If you notice the wings, for example, the wings, the tail, the legs, okay, especially notice the wings here, that um, the wings don't like pop or snap or anything like that when you go from one clip to another, which is something that happens, for example, sometimes with light waves, similar product that they have. Okay, so this is actually quite nice. There's not really a lot you have to do to get this to work. Okay, so let's go over the basic facts again. Um, basically, just do any animation you want. Uh, open up the MLA window. Okay, and um, then once you, when you want to turn any kind of animation into an animation clip, you simply click on the snowflake. Okay, and that creates... Uh, a clip action for you that is then available to you. Okay, and then um, you just simply the uh, each uh, each um, object 
animatable object in your scene uh, has a track, uh, NLA tracks. You can add more tracks if you want uh, by going down to the Add menu. Go to Add. You can add tracks, okay? Add tracks above selected, for example. Okay, and then if you want to add a strip, a new animation strip, just uh, select a track and, and then hit uh, Shift A. And then you can go ahead and start uh, spinning through here with the mouse wheel and finding a clip, animation clip. Okay, there's the idle animation I did earlier. And, um, and then you can go ahead and start, uh, you know, basically um, quickly mixing together things. Uh, the other thing to, to talk about, of course, is the blending modes. Uh, for example, I, I turn off the auto in and out, and I just hit, like, so I'll say blend out in this one, 10. Okay, when you hit the uh, blending yourself, you'll see this little kind of like ramp up here. Uh, means that the influence of this animation is going away. And you'll see here as we as we transition over that, as we drag over that, that so now you can see here, I've put that idle animation over top of this walk and everything. I still have the roar in here. And I was able to create an entirely new animation of him standing there idling and then roaring. Uh, in just a few seconds there, basically. And then you can see that he idles and then he roars. And if we don't like the timing of this, we can just move this back here a little bit. Uh, we can change the blending to be even longer, for example, if we wanted to. So you get entirely different types of animations, of uh, feels of animations. You can retime uh, the animation, you can uh, retime when things take place simply by dragging things along, scaling them, uh, and saying their blending modes to different times. All right, so that's really the basics of the NLA, and uh, it's quite a handy tool sometimes. So I hope that helps you out.